A freshly born <laughs> lamb, what are the sort of things that, as a shepherd, we should be looking for? Okay, Adam. I mean, we're, we're first of all looking to see that the lamb is bright, alert, conscious, can see us, can move away from us. As you can see, this lamb can. Then we're going to have a, a good look over it to look for any possible abnormalities that it might have been born with. Um, and one of the relatively common ones, Adam, is something called entropion. It's sometimes called, in, called turned in eyelid. If we have a look at this lamb, one thing you can see straight away is there's a slight watering from this eye. Yeah. If we look very closely, we can just see that the lower eyelid, and it is always the lower eyelid of an affected eye, is turned in. So instead of the, as you can see with the upper eyelid, there being a nice clean margin of skin on the eyelid, we have hair turned in and rubbing on the lamb's eye. And you can just see, if you look very carefully at the lamb's eye, there's just a little bit of cloudiness yeah, on so the surface. Started to damage the just started eye. to damage the eye. We'll check the other eye as well, because it's not uncommon for both eyes to be affected. And again, we can see that the right eye eyelid is in fact, the right lower eyelid is in fact affected. And we'll just roll that out. And if you roll it out and leave it, should that be enough or do you need to do something more? In the first instance, Adam, that's, that's all I would do. Um, but I'd keep an eye on that lamb for the next 24 hours and make sure that those eyelids remain turned out. Because they could flip back in again. They could indeed. And, and in a lamb like this, where there's already been a little bit of damage done to the cornea, the eye sore, and the lamb naturally tends to pull the eyeball back into the socket, which in increases the tendency for the lower lids to turn in. So I think in a case like this, Adam, perhaps we need a more permanent solution. And a one, one that I would suggest and one that I use quite often is injecting a small quantity of antibiotic into the lower eyelid. And I'll show you how to do that. OK, great. Well, I'm going to take about a mil of antibiotic. And for most lambs, that should be sufficient. OK, we've got our mill of antibiotic. Okay. Now, what I need you to do, Adam, is to hold that lamb yeah. as carefully as you can. What I'd suggest is, we're going to be the other way around. Can you come where I am now yeah. and hold the lamb just like that? Okay. So with your left hand, the front legs, your right hand, the back, and just you know, your arm on its neck. OK, so we're going to treat this right eyelid first. So the first thing I'm going to do is to turn the eyelid back out. Now I want to aim to leave some antibiotic about half a centimetre away from the eyelid margin and between the skin on the outside and the conjunctiva, which is the, the pink mucous membrane on the inside of the eyelid. To leave the antibiotic in the centre of the eyelid, I need to enter the eyelid with the needle. At this position here. Yeah. OK, now he's nice and still. Nice and still. OK, now we have a very sharp needle. I'm just going to introduce the needle advance about half a centimetre and now we're in a position to gently inject antibiotic. And that will swell the eyelid. Swells the eyelid and leaves a collection of antibiotic between the skin and the conjunctiva and you can just see that yeah. above the eyelid. Very clever. We we'll just apply a little bit of pressure to the site where we introduce the needle just to stop any bleeding. As you can see, the purpose of doing that is that what we call a bleb of antibiotic will keep the eyelid turned out and away from the cornea for a few days. 
and that's probably sufficient to prevent the problem occurring again. Problem solved. Excellent. Look at the